Mr. Warrior here with another math video. Woohoo! How we all doing today? Yeah, it's time for math, my friends. I know you were thinking, oh, but Mr. War, please, I just want to play my video games a little bit longer. No. Put that console to the side. Get out your math book. <laughs> Welcome to lesson 2.4. As you can see, Mr. War is giddy as usual. Just having a good time, you know, when it's math time, it's like, yeah. So, lesson 2.4, what's it all about? Well, it's a tough topic, actually. Estimate products. At least in the old days, I've been teaching for quite a while, estimate products always seem to give students difficulty. So, my job today is to try to not make it too difficult, right? I'm trying to make it simple for you. What's our central question? It's our purpose. Yeah, it's our learning target. It says, how can you estimate products by rounding and determine if exact answers are reasonable? Okay, so this is kind of like a rounding situation, like with the addition and subtraction of whole numbers, but now we're moving to multiplication because estimating products, we know a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. That's right. That's was Mr. War's little robot guy. Okay, now. We can't do any of that though, you know, unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now it says here an elephant can reach as high as 23 feet with its trunk. Whoa. It uses its trunk to pick up objects that weigh up to three times as much as a 165 pound person. Oh my goodness. This is about how much weight can an African elephant pick up with its trunk. Wow, what a great, great little real world problem. And it's the white arrow. Oh my goodness, he's back. You know, I've been trying to eliminate them, you know, and I just, they keep coming back. Anyways, he could be our friend if he just stays out of the way. Well, let's take a look at here what we have in our box. And it says here, it says cross out the information Yeah, you will not use. All right, let's take a look at that carefully. One thing I noticed, it says that an elephant can reach as high as 23 feet with its trunk. It says it uses its trunk to pick up objects that weigh up to three times as much as a 165 pound person. About, and this is a key word here, we have about, about how much weight can an African elephant pick up with its trunk? Well, we definitely have to keep the question because this is what we're trying to find out. But when I think about what we don't need, it doesn't really, I don't see where an elephant can reach a height is 23 feet with its trunk. I don't see where we're gonna need that. I always kinda of always think of this as this is like our topic sentence. So when you write a paragraph, you always wanna start your paragraph off with a topic sentence, okay? <laughs> There's my little funky N. Ah! So I would think that we circle the numbers you will use. Well, the fact that it uses its trunk to pick up objects that weigh three times as much, that seems really important three times as much as a 165 pound person. So I'm gonna just circle both of these here. It says how we use the numbers to solve the problem. Since it is asking us about how much weight, that suggests I'm gonna to need to estimate, right? We were just talking about, that's our purpose of this lesson, estimate. And I'm gonna to need to estimate what three times 165, because that's what an elephant, three times as much as a 165 pound person? That's incredible. Boy, that trunk is one strong muscle. Well, let's go ahead and continue. It states one way, estimate by rounding. Okay, of course, rounding. We just did that in the previous chapter. It says step one, round the greater factor to the nearest hundred. If you look at this, the greater factor is the 165. It's greater than the three. It says one way you could do it is just round it to the nearest hundred. In this case, because we're talking about 100, that's why they changed it to 200. 100 or 200, and it's closer to 200. Now it's a step two, use mental math. Think, you know, three times 200 is equal to three times two hundreds, which is equal to six hundreds, which is equal to 600. I like how they do that. So an African elephant can pick up about 600 pounds with its trunk, which is absolutely crazy that it could do that. It's too bad that poachers out there are killing African elephants at such an alarming rate. It's really, really sad. But uh, that's a whole other sad note about our elephant friend. Anyway, another way says to estimate by finding two numbers, the exact answer is between. Okay, so here they have three times 165. They say, okay, let's take three times 100, which is equal to 300. Okay, 
understand that so far. And I see, and this is here, the, the here's the example we already had, which was the three times 200, which is 600. It says now, think 165 is between 100 and 200. Ah, use those numbers to estimate. So the African elephant can pick up between 300 and 600 pounds. So I see what they did here. So we would kind of consider one is like the low estimate and the other one's maybe a high estimate. It's the way that, you know, I kind of think of this. Why do I say low and high? Well, because we know that the actual weight itself is not going to be more than 600 pounds because we rounded 165 up to 200. So we actually made the number larger. Therefore, there's no way the exact answer when we actually multiply could be larger than 600. That would be, that's why we call that the high estimate, and then this would be the low estimate. This isn't, oop, forgot to cross my T. Uh, this isn't going to be on the test, but I'm just trying to help you understand that little concept, why one number is lower, one number is higher. Finally, it says, is 200 less than or greater than 165? And of course, it's going to be greater than. So would the product of 3 and 165 be less than or greater than 600? Well, now we know that's what we just talked about. So maybe there was a good reason that we talked about that. So no, it's going to be less than 600. And the reason simply is because we used an estimate of 200 pounds, a 200 pound person. The actual problem said 165. That would mean that when we actually figure out the product, it would have to be less than. Now it says describe reasonableness. It says you can estimate a product to find whether an exact answer is reasonable. And this is really, really important to understand that reasonable in this way is the whole estimating. By estimating, we can see if our answer is reasonable. Eva's horse eats 86 pounds each week. Eva solved the equation below to find how much feed she needs for four weeks. As you can see, she took her four weeks, she multiplied it by the 86 pounds of food uh, her horse eats each week. Now it says Eva says she needs 344 pounds of feed. Is her answer reasonable? Okay, so now we have an exact answer. This is her claim. So it's our job to find out is it reasonable? This is where the estimation can come into play. Now it does say one way, estimate, we just said, is to go ahead and think, round to the nearest 10. So if we were to say, okay, well, there's your four weeks. We're gonna round this to the nearest 10. Remember, we always, we look at that neighbor. So 86 is closer to 90, okay? We're looking for that number in between 80 and 90. That's where 86, and you can see 86 is gonna be a little bit closer to 90. So we're just gonna multiply four times 90, which our answer would be, if you just think of our simple facts of four times nine, which is 36, and we also have another power of 10 here. So we end up with 360. Now, 344 is close to 360. It is. Okay, so we could say that the answer is reasonable. So Eva's claim of 344 is reasonable based on our estimation. We didn't have to do any multiplying. This is the beauty of this method of estimating. If you're multiplying, then you're not estimating. Okay, that's the key thing. Estimating is, is a nice way, just like we talked about with rounding. You know, it, it's, it's like mental math. It's something that you can do in your head. Or for example, let's say you're having a party and you want to order pizza and you have so many people. Well, you're not going to know exactly how much pizza each person eats, but you could estimate and say, well, you know, on average, let's just say that people are going to eat two slices. So then you can do a quick estimation and find out how much pizza you should order. That's the purpose of why we're doing this. And what do we have here? A hand. Hello, hand. You pointing to something? <laughs> okay, whatever. He's like the arrow, but now he's a hand. Okay, you're really cool. All right. It says another way. It says find two numbers, the exact answer is between. Remember, we go up and down. To me, I'm going to keep using this. This may not be necessarily, you know, what GoMath is presented here in this lesson, but again, I'm thinking low, high, rounding down, rounding up. Remember, that's, so when I think of this, I think of four times then 80, if we're going to find a number in between. And four times 80 here, we have our simple facts, which is 32, that's four times eight. Okay, and we have another power of 10. Over here, we're gonna have a four times what we already did, which is four times 90, which again, we already know is 360. So you can see, look at the, see that little range there? Yeah, the low end, the high end. So we know that our answer was 344. It is between 320 and 360, and there you go. So 344 pounds of feed is reasonable because it fell within that range. 
a range of 320, which was like a low estimate. High estimate was a 360. You can see the 344 is going to fit in between. So the answer is reasonable. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. I love math. Yes. Oh, but we're right near the end here, my friends. It's about Sharon Show. That's right. The chance for you guys to get out your math board. Yeah! Math board. Let's make it interactive. Okay. It says estimate the product by rounding. All right. And last time we had hundreds. Now look at, woo, scary. They're giving us thousands, but not a big deal because they suggested we could just take our five, multiply it, and the larger factor, which if you haven't noticed, this is a factor because a factor times a factor. I don't know why I'm trying to sing. Ooh, I can't even write. That's supposed to be a T. Oh my goodness. It's equal to a product. I know you guys already know this, right? So this is the larger factor and it says just to round it. Well, if we're going to round it, we're going to round it to the thousands place. So we have to say, is that closer to 2,000 or 3,000? By looking at the number, you'll see 2,200. Yeah, it's closer to 2,000. Okay. Keep it in mind, I don't need to put a comma here unless I want to. Okay. Um, the thousands place, it's not really required. Now I have my 10 because my simple factor is 5 times 2, but don't be fooled. You have 3 powers of 10. Okay, so now I have 10,000. I do need to put my comma there because I have five digits. Now it says, estimate the product by finding two numbers, the exact answer is between. We actually haven't figured out the exact answer, so I guess it really doesn't matter quite yet. Let's see, it doesn't actually tell us to do that, but let's do this. Five, er, five times, and then we already said that the number has to be between because we said 2,000, so it's equal to 10,000. Okay, just seem like I'm writing that down again. And then over here, it's going to be five times. Remember, we said 3,000. 2,000 or 3,000. So now we're going to go up. And then now you see our simple fact is 15. We have three zeros, three powers of 10. Okay, important to know that. It's 1,000. So now we have 10,000, 15,000. So let me go ahead and, oh, maybe this is it right up here. I don't know. Let's find out. I don't know. You guys doing this yet? I have no idea, fourth grade, if you guys are getting to this point where you're multiplying. But, hey, we have 15. Carry the one, that's five, that's six. And then we have 10, carry the one, 10. Yes, that is that answer up there. Is our answer reasonable? Woohoo! yes it is, because look at 10,000 and 15,000. So you can see that 11,000 is between those two. Yeah, Woohoo! can you feel that, my friends? Yeah, and you know, when you look at it, you can think the low estimate was a lot closer than like the high. And why was that, do you think? Hmm. Could it be that 2,213 is close, really close to 2,000? Probably. Hey, it's time to say adios, my friends. I know, it's another video. Woo, dude, that one just like, poof. It was like faster than the speed of light. My goodness. Yeah. Now, on that note, my friends, I must let you go. But before I say hasta la vista, my friends, you know, I'm going to say live long and prosper.